Hello, welcome to my ghost walkthrough of Heart and Soul. This is a mission from the Dark Project 20th Anniversary Contest that came in 10th, and I always felt that it should have scored a little higher. For me personally, it was one of my top 5 missions from that contest. I like it a lot. And the thing I like most about it is just how much freedom it gives you in how you can approach it. And I'll discuss a few examples of what I mean, but for now, let's just start the mission and read the briefing. I found a letter on my mantelpiece. It read, Dear Mr. Garrett, we know about your foray into the bone horde some month ago. The High Priest has chosen to overlook this. However, during your excursion you found two special stones, the Mystic Soul and the Mystic's Heart. Little did you realize the consequence. A rogue mage has acquired them and entered the Mystic's abandoned keep in the hopes of learning darker magics. Retrieve the stones for us, Mr. Garrett. If you do not, we will respond in the language you know so well. So much for the hammers owing me a favor. So, the hammers have given you a little job and there is no turning it down. They want you to steal back the Mystic's soul from the ruins of an old keep where it was first found. The Mystic's heart is also inside the keep, hopefully near the Mystic's soul, but you know by now it's never that easy. Once you're inside the keep, find some information on who's in charge. Your fans thinks that the Mystic's advisor was buried under the keep with a valuable emblem. Perhaps this won't be a worthless jaunt after all. Get out of the keep with the gemstones and return to the city. After you hand over the gemstones, I think it's time to find a new apartment where the hammers can't find you. Okay, so we have a loadout screen. The scroll here is just a letter which I read. And one interesting item you can buy here is the silver key. Your fans insist this key unlocks certain doors in the mystic's keep. He claims a cloaked man with a keyhole symbol on his ring gave it to him. So this costs 500, which is all the cash I have, but I'm actually gonna get it, because there is nothing else I need. And the key I don't need, strictly speaking. There are a couple more copies of it in the mission, but it helps to have it right away. You're just gonna have more options available from the get-go. So, let's make a real save. Quick save. There is no map of the keep, which would have been kinda useful, because even though it's not very big, it's very dense and interconnected. And on your first playthrough, it might fool you into thinking that it's much bigger than it actually is. I know, it fooled me. So I'll try to show you which areas connect to which, so you kind of get an idea of the layout here. And one of the first things I want to do is pickpocket the captain of the guard. And if you've seen my Full Moon Fever video, it's kind of the same deal. He has a land patrol route, and it can be hard to locate him. But he always starts at the same spot and his patrol route never changes, so if you know where he starts, you can pickpocket him not long after the mission begins, and that's, I think, is the best way to do it. Okay, so let's begin for real now. Help! We've been hired by some crazy wizard. He'd unlocked the gatehouse and threw the key inside so we don't leave. Bring a squad of the Baron's men. Hell, even the Hammerites might do us good. Open the gate, dark things are walking. Okay, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> so here is the key. We can unlock this. And one interesting thing you can do here is open the gate. And this guard will see that. And he's gonna desert, which is kind of funny. So I'm not gonna do this, because nobody leaves their post on my watch. But before I reload, let me show you something else. Look. So here is the statue with the harp, and later we are gonna learn of a character called the Harpist. But for now, just note that there are quite a few of these harps around the keep which you can interact with, and they all do different things. This one, for example, will open that gate, but also activate a bunch of lights here. And I don't need that, I, I don't need that gate open, and I don't like the lights, so... I probably won't end up showing you all the harps, I'll show you a couple. But they can be both helpful and detrimental. Ok, 
Okay, so before I pickpocket the captain, there is one thing I can do here, which is solving this puzzle. So here is a collector tower with a control panel, and it's one of five, right? And we need to do this to power that gemstone or whatever it is, which will allow us to access the advisor's emblem. So the gemstone is right above the advisor's sarcophagus, all the way down in the tomb. And until we activate all five collector towers, it's gonna be closed. So here is the thing I love about this puzzle. Even though it's a maze, we don't actually have to solve it. We can just climb on top of it, and it's a perfectly legitimate way to approach this. It's just great. This guy pass anyway. Yeah, I need to let him pass first. Right, there we go. The sarcophagus should now be open. And through here, we can get to the captain. Gotta stop jumping it. No. There we go. He has the orange key. And now. you don't need it. Every single door it unlocks, you can lockpick. But if you want to avoid that, and if you want all the pickpockets, that's the best way to get it. So he comes through here at around 2 minute mark. Let me show you something else. So apart from the maze down there, the only other part of the keep grounds is the cloister over here. And that's pretty much everything. And the keep itself is this building right here. We're gonna hit it last. <laughs> you can also get to the cloister this way. <laughs> but up here is the silver coin stack, our first piece of loot. Worth 12. Down here, use the key to access the storage with a spice bag. Total 57. Okay, here is another thing I love about this mission. So, this mission features both humans and the undead in about equal proportion. And if you played other fan missions before, you're probably used to the fact that you are forced to go through the human inhabited areas before you get to the haunted ones. At least that's how it normally is. Well, in this mission you can go to the tombs right away, and that's what I'm actually gonna do for no other reason than I can, and I also think the mission flows better this way. And one way to get there, which I'm not gonna take, is through here. Keep your distance. The sealed wall has been mined for tomorrow's plunge to find the red stone. If we want what the wizard wants, we get out of here. Don't blow yourselves up until then. Keep the mine below this open. And this can be fun, because you're gonna alert all the undead down here and all the guards up here, and you can cause some mayhem. 
have them fight each other. But that's obviously not what I want to do. A little tricky to mantle this statue. There we go. You don't mantle the statue, you mantle the pole here. And it holds a gem. Total 207. So we can take this ledge to get to the bedroom, which I'll show you in a minute. But we can also go this way. So that's the door to the bedroom, there is a sleeping zombie, and she'll wake up as soon as we read this. For the authorities, I'm writing this in the hopes that it will be found and presented as evidence to the courts as to what has happened here. At her last performance, my lady was lured here by a man who wished her to play for his students. We did not know he was a sorcerer and a madman. He locked us in a house of stone. He would come to his special balcony over the pool and watch my lady bathe. He forced her to play for him in a skip whenever his melancholy struck, sometimes two hours, four hours on end. We begged help from the sorcerer's acolytes, but they never spoke to us. My husband, who was also in my lady's service, found the passage behind the wardrobe and went through, hoping to find a way out. The next morning they threw his lifeless body on the carpet. Now they have taken my lady away, perhaps to play for the sorcerer again. But that was four days ago. My husband still lies on the carpet downstairs. I feel in my bones that something worse has happened, but I will wait at my lady's door until she returns. So reading the book will wake her up. But also, taking this chest will wake her up as well, and it's worth some loot. So a candlestick here, total 407. Two goblets here, total 437. And that's all we need in this house. And I'm gonna take that passage over there, which is what was mentioned in her journal. Oh, it's not a perfect shadow, okay. Well, actually, let me show you what else is here. So here is the pool. Through that balcony you can get to the maze, where we entered it. And here is the silver door, which you can open with the silver key. You need the orange key for this one. And this also just leads back to the maze. So no need to go here. Let's just wait for this lady to come back. other thing of note here is this harp, but I don't think it does anything. Okay, so here is the gate, Who's there? which oh. we could have raised with the harp over there. Just the wind, I guess. Here is the main entrance to the keep itself. This way, we can go to where we actually entered the keep grounds. So let me just quickly show you. Hello? Here we are. Is someone there? 
So, the coin stacks and I ring here, total 484. And I'm gonna use this well to get underground. And the bucket over there can kinda use as an elevator. I love the ambience here. These are Victoria's laughter sounds pitched down, which now kinda sound like crying. Which is very creepy. Gold book here. Total 584. This will take us back to the keep. But for now, let's continue to the tomb. So the first part here is flooded grotto, the strange structure in the middle. Coins here, total 604. <laughs> That's the advisor's sarcophagus, I'll talk about it in a couple of minutes. for this hunt to turn around, which he doesn't want to do. Okay, good. So here we come to an interesting room. Gotta pick this lockbox. This door will open. Now here is a wall with spikes, and it'll activate as soon as you throw either of the two chests here. That one only has a gas arrow, I don't need that, but this one has some loot. And what you're supposed to do is the wall will, will start coming towards you, and the door will close again, so you're supposed to lockpick this and get out. But there is a way to do this without having to lockpick the... to use the lockpicks. If you're fast enough, you can get out. This, however, presents another problem. Behind the wall with spikes, there is another piece of loot. And had I lockpicked that lockbox, the door would be open again and I would be able to walk back in once the wall has stopped and taken it. But now we're gonna have to do something else.
Okay, so here, if we're fast enough, we can avoid triggering that hunt. Yeah. <laughs> rope up here. <laughs> so we're back in this room and we can now access this piece of loot. Total of 1179. Now we have everything we need here. I made a little bit of noise when coming out of the water, but luckily no one second alerted. So, it's a bit foolish of me to save as I was coming out of the water. Okay. Actually, this is a really good timing here. So that's the advisor sarcophagus, which is closed until you solve the maze puzzle. And that guy is, I assume, the advisor himself, who spawns here when the sarcoph sarcophagus opens. And the tricky part with him is that because of how he looks, it can be hard to tell which way he's facing. So right now it seems he's looking the other way. And now he turned around. <laughs> So if I'm a little bit faster here, I should be able to grab the emblem. Problem is that they turn around randomly. Now the hunter's looking this way again. Okay, good. Finished it here. So the emblem is worth some loot, bring the total to 1579, and checks off this objective. But now we must go deeper into the tomb. We're gonna access another objective there. And This is my favorite part in the mission. It feels very Tomb Raider-esque. So, that over there is our final destination. But this door is closed, so is this one. So we have to continue here. We have two red particle beams, which if you cross will activate the crushing walls. And so will this pressure plate. <laughs> And on this sarcophagus is a lever. When we take it, a zombie is gonna spawn here. But we can get out another way. Grab the gem, two more pieces of loot here. Total 1769. And if you step on this pressure plate, you can deactivate the particle beams. Now we can easily get out. Okay, I should make another real save here.
Okay, now we can use the lever here. And this is kind of interesting. So when we flip the ring, it's gonna open this door. And this was one of the most confusing bits for me when I was playing this mission Supreme Ghost style. Because I couldn't figure out what this is. Is this just a door or is it a trap? Because if you're standing on it in the wrong place and flip the ring, you're gonna fall onto the spikes and die. So it kind of looks like a trap, but then again, it's just a door. So I ruled that it was a door simply because it was the only potential bust to my supreme run. But let me know what you think. This is a trap, then maybe I didn't supreme ghost the mission then after all. Here is another lever and a dagger, level 1869, and using it here will open a couple of trap doors here, will open the door we just passed, and also the door we need opened. To access one of our objectives. And it also spawns a zombie, of course. So now this is open. <laughs> and this is pretty simple. Grey plates are traps, gold ones are safe. This differently colored bit is also a pressure plate. And here is the mystic's heart. So we now have two of our objectives done. So we're done in the tomb now, but before I leave, I wanna close a couple of doors here. <laughs> to close this one, we can use the good old block the door with another prop trick. Hopefully this should work. But before I do that, I want to wait until that zombie comes back. Because I want to trap him in this room, so that he doesn't come out there. But there is an actual benefit to closing this door behind me. Apart from being good for my OCD. Yep, that worked. And now he'll stay there forever. I love the creature designs in this mission. They are obviously made out of stock resources, but they are very inspired <laughs> and honestly creepy sometimes.
so I just want to close this. No real reason to do it. Okay, he just turned this way. Okay, good. Now actually to descend into the water here without making noise, you can kinda land like this. Take this corridor. So this leads back to the tomb. I just wanna grab the gold vase here. Total 1969. One of the ghosts here, this lady kinda sounds like a spider. And there is a webbed body over there, so she's kinda spider spirit of some sort. Okay, this is not good. The fire shadow lady is stuck on the healing fountain. Luckily, Simon and Loden freed her up. So this is a chapel of some sort. I'm not really sure what this building is. But the statue here holds another lever. And I don't need that, this is just a spare, and when you grab this one, nobody will spawn. So if you want to avoid spawning some zombies in the tomb, you can come here and grab this lever instead. So at the cost of spending a little bit more time, you can make your life a little easier. But she went a little bit further. <laughs> Here we can get a goblet. And this way we can return to a place we've already been to. So another silver door here. This should look familiar. So I'm not gonna go too far here. I just wanna grab this wine bottle near the drunk guard. Total 2034. There is more stuff to be done underground. Trying to be fancy here, and it's not working out. Maybe I should just take the long way. And by long, I mean like three seconds longer. Okay, so flipping this ring open the way to the dungeon. Let me just reset everything here. 
There we go. And in the dungeon, you can find another copy of the silver key. So in case you haven't bought one, there is where you can find it. This looks like somewhere you can go, but you really can't. And the dungeon is occupied by a bunch of barracks, but they are not a problem to sneak by. So all I want up here is this coin, but you can also come back to the cloister this way. And this then leads back to where we pickpocketed the captain. So if you want to, you can get into the dungeon right away this way. So, like I said, the mission is really open. But I'm gonna head back, because there is even more stuff to be found down here. So we can rope up here. <laughs> and this way we can get back to the cloister once again. But through here we can get to the library. So we're back on the surface, but there are a couple more haunted parts. <laughs> There's a gold nugget, total 21.44. Gold book here, and a book switch. Here is another copy of the silver key, and the torque, and you can't close this. Total 2394. <laughs> Have another book switch here. Silver Nugget, 2444, and the book. Our master, the great mystic, listened to his advisor and brought the harpist to the sacrificial table. After his lure, he took the knife and cut into his own chest. His heart fell out, striking the floor. It was a heart of stone. Yet he remained alive. During the following month, he built a tomb for her and placed his stone heart above the sarcophagus. Then he asked his acolytes to give themselves to the embalmers and serve him from the other realm. Many have done so already. Such is our devotion. Our master even asked his own advisor to lay himself to rest at the entrance to the tomb. The advisor did so and was entombed alive in a sarcophagus with a glass lid and his sacred emblem by his head. With each passing day, our master sinks deeper into despair. He is now trying to resurrect his acolytes with some success. He has ordered us to set up lunar collectors in order to raise his advisor, but we know he is merely doing tests in order to raise the harpist again. Our master laughs and mutters to himself, and we wonder if this is the end. There are only three of us acolytes left. The embalmers are still hard at work, sealing away our comrades. 
At dawn we heard a horrific scream from the experiment chamber. By the time we got there, he was gone. And all that remained was a smooth dark stone in a heap of ashes. It whispers to us. We know our master still remains inside, but we cannot reach him. We will guard his keep until he returns. Right. Good. Nothing of interest here except a flash bomb. Here, you can get a tiara. Total 2569. Okay, I'm gonna make another real save here, because this is the door I wanna take, but I, I wanted to show you a couple more things up top. So we're gonna enter the keep itself, finally, and one way is to slash this banner here, so this leads to the barracks, but of course slashing banners is against ghosted rules, and I don't want to do that. And through here, you can also get back to a ledge overlooking the cloister, and you can even get onto the roof right here, and to the top floor of the keep. There is a hole to the bottom floor. <laughs> you can even go all the way here, and I've shown you this place already. Okay, so the keep is pretty cool place. At pretty much any point you can change floors, because you can go up and down whenever you want. And I love buildings like this. Whenever there is a building with multiple floors, you really should be able to go up and down in places other than staircases. <coughs> Here is the kitchen. Goblet. <coughs> what was that noise? In the storage are two bottles of wine. Six eighty four. Odd noise. In the dining hall here is the plate. Twenty seven. Oh well. Thirty four. I hear something. So I'm not sure what this room is, there is nothing to do here. This kinda looks like a portal. And if you touch that blue thing, <coughs> it does damage. Just like in the maw. Hmm. And here, you need a silver key to pickpocket this guard because he never moves or turns around. So if you want his purse within ghost rules, you need the silver key. And this then just takes us back to the hallway with the storage, where we picked up the spice bag. Can't hear it anymore. This will take Probably us back to the maze. Huh? And this... is the main entrance to the keep. 
So we will be in, in the window up there earlier. Die! Okay, I'm not gonna go this way, just to show you. This once again leads all the way up here. This is where I want to go. Two pieces of loot here. Cablet. Total 2999. Okay. Don't want to make noise. There is a gem. <laughs> and if you step on this, it's actually gonna open, so <laughs> don't do that. Here is the barracks, so that's the slashable banner I showed you earlier. Coin stack in here. Here is the captain's room. That's the last time I jump for rats. <laughs> so inside is another copy of his key. Some arrows in there. And here is Captain Marad's journal. So this completes finding information on who's in charge. Company logbook. New contract. A lone mage has hired us to clear out a ruined keep outside the city's walls. We're supposed to clean up the likely infestations. Burks, spiders, maybe even a cray or two. Nothing the boys can handle, but I wonder why he wants the entire company. He must have deep pockets to hire that many men, and I'm betting my best boots there is more than just an average beast in the ruin, since he told us to bring explosives. We have arrived at the ruin. The mage had a chest with him, which never left his person. We sent one man through the top window to open the gate. The mage wanted us to capture some creatures alive, extra coin for each one. So far we managed to secure a blue cray that was wandering about. Took care of several spiders, nothing difficult. We made short work of the surface level. The boys found some keys that fit many of the doors, but no other keys have, have turned up. There is a lot of fancy silver doors around the place that are locked, but from the sounds we've been hearing, we want them to stay that way. Our contract is for one week, so we decided to make ourselves comfortable. For the remaining days. We placed our provisions in the storeroom. The boys set up their own patrols to show off to their employer, a professional company this. We found what seems to be an old prison, sounds like there is a burrow infestation down there. We managed to capture one that came to the surface, but the boys are reluctant to go down there unless they get proper extermination equipment. We'll watch the entrance in the meantime. The mage wanted us uh, wanted access to the top level. It took several tries and a majority of our explosives to get through the silver doors. There was a large harp sitting across the room with a raised dice. I wouldn't have thought this odd except for the shekels stacked into the floor next to the harp. The mage managed to figure out some sort so stone head mechanism and opened up a pair of stone doors. Inside were several rusty cages. We put the blue cray in one and burke in the other. Then the mage instructed us to get out. Our employer approached us rather agitated. It seems he's missing a red stone, which he had brought with him, in the chest. He demanded that all the men be searched. The boys grumbled at the insult, but the search was made. The stone was not found. Yesterday was the last day of our contract. But when we went to leave, the mage was at the front gate, and it was closed. Then he took the gatehouse key, threw it inside, and slammed the door. Now we're trapped. The mage has demanded that we find the red stone. He suspects that it floated down into the crypts. He wants us to blow the tomb entrance and find the, find it. The boys want to use the rest of the explosives to get into the gatehouse. I'm tempted to follow the boys, but we're a professional company and the job will be finished. I have them keep up their patrols. A few men have been drinking on duty. I can't blame them. I had brought 10 days worth of provisions and it's been two weeks and we're running low. I locked the storeroom and I'm having Lucky keep an eye on it. I sent Perth to the mage with a request to get provisions, hoping the mage would magic the gate open. Now Perth has gone missing, and so is one of my other boys. 
I don't know if they climbed the wall to escape or what. The others are getting unnerved by the sounds coming from behind the silver doors. At this point, every one of them wants out of here as fast as they can run. Okay. Two coin stacks here. Total 3036. This takes us back to where we were before. Here is that place with the harp and a pair of shekels. So if you frog this... So that's kind of creepy. I don't know if it does anything else. So I don't really want to frog it. And here is then the stone head puzzle, which you can solve to open the door leading to the experiment chamber, but there is a better way. So let me just get some loot here. Candlestick. Another candlestick. <laughs> and gem up here. Total. 32, 36. So this you can take, take outside. This leads back to the kitchen. Let's continue for here. <clears throat> oh man, I'm losing my voice. So this way, I can slash a banner. Oh, not this one. This one. And get into a bedroom. But I'm gonna get there another way by unlocking that silver door. However... Also, rope up here. It was a bad shot. <laughs> okay, he didn't hear that. So this door we can open with the orange key. There is a secret book switch. And this is the back door to the experiment chamber and another copy of the silver key here. Wind blows. So there is the mage, which is behind all this mess. In the cages here you can find a blue cray, a barrack, just as was mentioned in the captain's notes. And here is the mystic soul, our last objective. And luckily, the mage doesn't alert to it being missing, so we can just leave. Master, we must conclude that your personal attachment to the Harpist is preventing you from reaching immortality. Only when this attachment is removed can you separate your soul from your mortal coil. <laughs> so this is the last place in the keep we have to explore. Candle 
what's the cure? Gem. Here is the silver door. So here is just a guess arrow. There is also a gold candlestick. Total 3351. And this is the main entrance to the keep then. So once again, you could just enter this section through this hole without needing to use any keys. That's not good. So there is our last piece of loot. It's a ring which is bombarded by magic missiles, and if you take it, the missile will just keep going and they will hit a wall here, probably alerting someone. Not probably, they will definitely alert someone. But to avoid it, we can just press this button and that will stop the trap. So we're in. Total 3451, that's all the loot in the mission. Using this, we'll activate a holy water fountain, I believe, somewhere underneath this pipe. No real need to do it. <laughs> Here is once again a place we've seen before. So yeah, lots and lots of ways to move around. Just lovely. Someone there? Nothing making noise now. All right. <sighs> now we just get out and mission complete. Nice. So it took me 34 minutes, 27 seconds. Found all the loot. 3451, picked two buckets, and one lock. So thanks for watching, hopefully you enjoyed this, and if you haven't played this mission yet, I encourage you to try it out. It's really amazing. Next time I'm going back to the dark mode, and I'm gonna pro play Perilous Refuge, and I'm already looking forward to that, I friggin' love Perilous Refuge, it's one of my favorite missions. So, see you guys then, for now, take care.